Hello, my name is Matthew Island. I'm a Director of Studies at Sydney Sussex College and during my time in Cambridge I've conducted over 500 admissions interviews in computer science. Today I'd like to share with you my top tips. Tip number one is start engaging with computer science as early as possible. In the interview, we want to assess your potential to succeed in studying computer science in Cambridge. The best way to prepare for that is to start practicing computer science as early as possible. It's very difficult to know what the subject of computer science is until you've been practicing it for a while. Um, since in the interview our goal is to assess your potential to succeed on the computer science course, um, uh, we'll be trying to determine if you can think and approach problems like a computer scientist. There are many routes into studying computer science and in the interview we most likely won't be testing any specific knowledge. Um, so you don't need to memorize a set of facts. Um, but the more you've practiced uh, solving logic problems, writing programs, um, perhaps writing mathematical proofs, um, maybe building um, electronic circuits, uh, the more likely you'll be able to apply the skills you've developed through these activities in the interview. The interview is testing your potential to become a great computer scientist. So in preparing for your interview, um, we'd also hope that you become a better computer scientist overall. Um, a computer science interview isn't the kind of test that you can revise for the night before. Um, but the more you do in advance, uh, the more prepared you'll feel to tackle the kinds of questions um, that we might give you in the interview. Tip number two is be yourself. In computer science, interviews are usually of a technical nature. That means uh, we're most interested in your logical thought processes and problem solving ability. Um, and we're unlikely to ask questions about your character uh, or your extracurricular activities. You can think of the interview as a conversation in which we're trying to solve a problem together but naturally one in which all the insight has to come from you. Um, uh, we don't need you to dress a particular way or use fancy words. Uh, we just want to gain some insight into how you think. That leads nicely onto tip number three, which is be willing to think. We want self-motivated, proactive people who will get things done. So maybe, for example, um, in the interview, if I ask you to count how many comparisons are performed in a particular sorting algorithm, um, I'd rather you didn't say, I don't know, uh, because you haven't learned that in school, um, but I'd prefer you to sit down and actually work it out. Of course, make sure to talk to us during the interview. Uh, if you share your thoughts with us, we might be able to support relevant thoughts um, and help you to avoid others that, while interesting, um, um, might not help lead to a solution to the particular problem at hand. Sometimes we'll give you hints uh, if you're stuck, and um, other times we may want to actually see if you can get yourself unstuck when you're in a jam. Uh, where we do give you hints, uh, it's great when you can manage to build on top of them to get yourself to a solution. What's not so good is when a candidate requires lots and lots and lots of hints and is unable to use those hints um, to help them in their solution. Um, that usually means that you're not thinking about um, what we as interviews are saying and we really do try to give you useful hints um, that will help you in your answer. Tip number four is to think clearly. There are many formats that the admissions interview might take, but in most of those formats, we give you credit for the logical steps forward that you manage to make in the solution to the problem. So feel free to explore the problem uh, a little bit at the start and share your observations with us. 
For example, you might be able to set out some ideas about possible approaches, um, or very early on eliminate some approaches that you don't think will lead anywhere. I think one of the differences between school and university is that um, at university uh, there isn't a difference uh, between what you're taught and how things actually work in the real world. Um, therefore, we really want to see that you can take a sensible, logical and mature approach to solving problems that later on you might find in the real world. Tip number five is to think quickly. In life, success is achievement per unit time. The interview is a time-limited form of assessment, just like an examination. Of course, getting things right and exhibiting a clear, logical thought process it is the most important thing. Um, but, <laughs> conversely, given infinite time, um, almost everyone would be able to solve most of the problems that we're going to give you. So we'll also be assessing you on the basis of how many things you're able to get right during the interview. Then tip number six is to think through the consequences of what you're doing. In life, you often don't have time to mechanically work through the details of every idea that you have. It's good to be able to reason about where an approach might lead um, before launching yourself down a road that might lead nowhere. Everyone's going to make mistakes and get things wrong, <laughs> that's taken as given, um, but it's also not so bad if you're able to justify why you took the particular approach that you did. Y you can usually build on that. Random guesswork is almost always bad. Um, it, it's good to have intuition, of course, um, and to try out some ideas to build familiarity with a problem. Um, but what's less good is naively throwing around a lot of ill-thought-out ideas um, in the hope that you might chance across something that's correct and that the interviewer would confirm this for you. For example, if you're interested in programming, um, we're not looking for the kind of programmer who will try to get their program to work by trying out ideas at random until it happens to print the correct answer. Um, in this case, we'd be looking for programmers who take a reasoned, logical approach to building a program that's correct by construction. Um, and then, ideally, also having some way to justify to themselves that their program is correct beyond just it happens to print out the correct answer in the one case that I've tried. And finally, uh, tip number seven specifically concerns online interviews. Um, it's to use technology that you're comfortable with. Um, uh, don't stress about the technology in a virtual interview. Uh, we're only interested in your thinking skills uh, and to assess that, uh, we just need a communications link that works. It's often better to uh, write any working on a piece of paper and then hold that up to the webcam to show us, uh, rather than trying to operate a graphics tablet if you're not comfortable with that. I think I felt really guided and supported during my interview and admissions process. Uh, I knew the entire structure of the day well in advance, so nothing came as a big shock. And even though there's no such thing as a perfect interview, you do feel really supported and guided by your interviewers. I myself made mistakes and errors and I was really eased through the process. It's very conversational and I was never made to feel intimidated.